Hi everybody. Well, you might recognize this material because we did something with it last time. And we did this. We used some ink tents, um, dye sticks, and we made it very colorful. And we did some very naive kind of stitching on it. Lots of color. Lots of joy in that one, which I really liked. But I was saying that a material can... It's just a starting point, and sometimes when it's um, like you don't have uh, an idea, starting with something that's already there is a good thing. It sort of gives you a base, but it could go in so many different ways. I, it didn't have to be that bright concept that I did last time. So I decided I'd use the fabric again, just to just to show you that you can do other things with it I, I don't have a huge plan just that I'm trying to keep it not quite so bright so I found this in my cupboard and this is a piece of very very fine silk I got it from the op shop and loved it thought oh, I can really use this can you see those blush light icy pinks through to blush through to coppery kind of orange peachy lovely and see-through so I don't know but I had an idea to sort of use them and I didn't know whether we, how it would be if we overlapped oh yeah so I could easily do something like that here and there or you know and make that my um, my flowers and I just wonder what it would be like if we just kept adding little bits so I'll just try again I'll just do a smaller circle uh, this time and we're still at the concept stage thinking could that work I like that we're still getting that center of the flower through I quite like that a lot so I'm just going to choose from different areas of this same fabric and cut some circles of different sizes and see if we can lap them somehow like that so that they well, well later I would think I would add some stitching on it that's the whole point of doing an embroidery but I just so I don't suppose they'd have to always be circles they could be an ellipse you know sort of like a stone sort of shape you know something like that or that could be underneath and this one could be on top do you are you loving the delicacy of it in comparison with what we had before i think it's really could be quite pretty and we would use paler colors and um and different techniques this time to make something completely different to this but it's the same fabric so it's really just an exercise in showing you that you can use a nice pattern and you can use it in several different ways um i could easily think of probably half a dozen ways to use this off the top of my head so it's just you know you start with a really nice a really nice print and you go from there but let's try a few different techniques you know we've done the we've done the dyeing and we've done a little a little uh slow stitch on that but you know how could we get this one to work well i'm going for a start i'm not going to do it landscape like i did the last one um sorry portrait i'm going to do landscape so maybe if i sort of think about what I would be wanting first. Quite like the idea of having that leaf there. I don't really want to cover that leaf up. Yeah, we're getting there, I think. Something. Or maybe maybe another over there. Something off to the side. See how I have 
two big ones here and a small one. Well, I would feel inclined to go off to the side there. Do something on that. And then we have a lovely flow through that. Quite happy. Quite happy with it. I love silk. I haven't actually used it in this way much before. I do like stiffening silk and cutting shapes out of it. That's a that's another wonderful thing. I might get to that at one stage. Oh, they're looking a little bit more like poppies, yeah. aren't they? Whatever they are, I like them. And I would be inclined now to just do most things with just stitch, I think. Although I would like a little bit of texture. I do like a bit of texture. So I do have a thing about using linen. Just bear with me for a moment. So I'll come to that. But I also had a look at this and I thought, well, we could also do... Um, here's some more of this fabric. Um, and I, I cut one of the centers out of the flowers because I thought, well, we could use that if we wanted. We could use it as a center for our flower. Or we could use it over here on that bud. We could cut out a few of them. So it already matches because it's in those tonings. So that's something that we could do. Yeah. A leaf in the same respect, we could use one of the leaves. So I'm just saying, we can really do what we want. And that's the beauty of it. I decided that I wanted some over top of those flowers and then I could use a leaf that I've taken from the fabric and do that. So just keep moving things around and see how you might like it within that frame. So that's what I mean. And if you have a surround, you can use it to frame your picture and think, oh, what would I like? What can I use? So here I'm just using the same fabric that we had anyway. So uh, I'm just experimenting again with those um, flowers that were in the original print. Uh, I'm just cutting another one out there, you see. How's that? Let's take another one. I'm just having a look at the fabric and I'm thinking, oh, you're very fray, aren't you? And I'm just seeing what the fabric wants to do. And in this case, it wants to fray a lot. But I am not going to discard it because maybe I can use that. Maybe it's something I would like. I don't know. But um, before I was looking for something to add a little bit of texture. Well, that's certainly texture. But if it does it on that, then it's it'll be doing it on this as well. So let's have a look. Now, if I wanted to, I could use some uh, some just a combination of um, PVA glue and water, and I could just uh, dip those edges or brush some on, and um, that would be really good. It would stop it from fraying and we could use it nice and neat as it is. But I quite like seeing what the material wants to do. I know it's going to fray anyway, but maybe we can use that frayed edge. Maybe it's a good thing if it frays, especially in these centers. Can you see what I'm doing? So, in that instance, yes, I think that would be nice and I would use it. I always, you know, I know it's a little bit ragged, but it is going to be in these beautiful tonings that will make it a much calmer, more beautiful picture. I went and found a piece of coarse linen, linen that I am now having a look to see what I can do with it. Oh yes. 
Now you might think you don't know art and you can't do things, but really you know what you like. You know, if you were decorating your house, you know that you like that cushion or you like it better over there or something like that. And that's what this is, that's what I'm doing. I'm just putting pieces down that I think I might like like that. I like the arrangement. Just like you like an arrangement of furniture and um, yes there's a few different sort of techniques but they're easily thought incorporated into stuff well, look at that isn't that looking beautifully delicate I can do delicate and I'm going to I'm going to stick with what I've got there now and I'm um, pretty happy with it I might add a little dab of glue underneath some of those pieces to keep them where I want them to be. Just pop them down like that. Okay then, well I've been having a little think and I like to think that there isn't a craft I don't like because you know sometimes it's just it needs uh, a little kick into the modern world. Um, what I'm thinking about at the moment is I've just started putting this cream on now. Slow stitching is great, but can you see I'm just I'm just stitching them around, and then from the centres of the flower I'm doing those long stitches out, and that's holding it all together, you know. But eventually I'll get to the next stage, and my mind's already there thinking, what are we gonna do? I don't know. I really would like to see some peach or something brought in and and more. Um, stitching there but then I had a little crazy idea and I thought why don't we just do it in all in the one color let's see how it works and it made me think of a really old craft called candle wicking so candle wicking started in the Americas we think and um, people that were heading out into the prairie and they weren't allowed to take very nice uh, you know non um, non-useful items with them so what they did was to decorate they would use the uh, the candle wick fiber and they would use that to sew on white and it's also called white work because it uses um, just white on white and that's the traditional way to do it and uh, it can be very um, very pretty uh, but there's no reason it has to be like that but it did bring it to mind and it made me think of maybe it would work if we only used this color and this color is a cream the same as the background and I just thought maybe I can make that work I've never done it before you know I'm a real color fan but I this one's sort of um, different it's delicate and I'm liking the idea that we might be able to it'd certainly be a test but to make that cream show up and be part of the whole overall design, yes, I'm thinking that's certainly a possibility. So for a start at least, I'm just going to stick with cream and see how I go. So looking at this leaf and how I might attach it, I've actually done a little bit of fly stitch on the, on the tip there. And, um, but either that or some long stitch into the center like I'm doing now, and um, some stitches in the center that would make it go like a central line and the veins heading out. Different ways to do this, but it's the same effect. So the next thing I would think about is, well, you know I'm going to be doing these the same as I've done the others, but I have this lovely, you can hardly see it, can you, but you can, it's texture. And let's hold it up, you might see it better, you can see, beautiful texture. And so I'm going to do some lines now of running stitch, and I'm going to, just going to curve and meander down, taking this, doing the edge of that, and some of that just doing the whole thing in lovely sensuous 
curvy lines. So let's start here. I'm using two strands at least of stranded cotton. If I could find my crochet cotton of this colour, I'd be using it because that would be better, I would think. But my point is that at the moment, I'm wanting to use thick, um, noticeable stitches because it's it's going to be hard enough to make it show up or or what I don't know it's certainly part of the design but this, this is a tricky one I haven't done it before so it's um it's another experiment but I mean I might in the end decide oh yeah that's that's all well and good but I would like to see a tiny bit of color and then I might bring something in. There's no reason I couldn't use colour. But I just thought I'm going to start with this and see how I go. I did notice I have this absolutely delicious icy um, aqua. Gosh, I wish you could pick that colour up nice. Yes, you might be able to see it. See, it's just so delicate. And, you know, that may well come in, especially with these lines, to um, just to add something. Just to add something because I don't know how well these lines are going to show up. Um, but I'm wanting to try it and that's that's the main thing. So a running stitch. And I'm not too bothered about whether it's nice and even. I just do it. Because this is one of those intuitive stitch things that I, I do. It's like... I don't know where I'm going. I don't have a plan. I don't have a pattern. But I like the idea of just letting the, the fabric and the design speak to me and tell me what it wants. Now I might decide as time goes by that I need another colour in and uh, it would probably be an aqua or a pale pink or something. But it's like, uh, does it? will it require more depth? That would be the thing that I would look at. I don't want it to be pasty. But I am going for delicate. I don't do a lot of delicate, but I can. And um, that's the experiment today. You know, it's one of those artist kind of tricks to, you know, is to lead the eye. If you have something like this, uh, a line that draws you in or to a focal point or uh, in and out, you know, this is going in and out of the picture but it's sort of taking you past the things um, that you might be interested in along the way. So in the previous video I did those circles uh, in the background in the bright blue because I liked it and um, you know, sometimes it's good to have something there in just the background that um, it's just an added element. Um, I am enjoying having that. I'm quite pleased with the, the concept. Just finish this one here. Whoops. Oh, we've come undone. But my plan is to just catch whatever edges I haven't gotten yet. And maybe out over there. I see a little easier now those lines that just um, rove across rove across they're quite pretty okay so I'm doing a few more lines around and then I'm doing some lines out but also I'm doing some lines out that end in a French knot and that sort of looks like the, the little stamens in a flower. So I'll go ahead now and I'll do the rest. I'll show you. If you haven't already seen it, I do have a really nice um, video on French knots. But I'll show you now. So to do an ordinary long stitch, I'll just go in again there to do a French knot. Wind it round your needle quite a few times 
and then instead of putting it back in here put it in further out and it will leave a little tail behind your French knot and it creates what we're after I think you can see how using that tatty edge that we created on this center works well with that because doing those lines and it just um, it just staggers that edge a little bit more. Well, I've adjusted the lighting here. Now the cream that we have going through is not showing up as well as I'd hoped. Now, I know I haven't finished some of the flowers yet, but I got sidetracked for a minute. Now I was really hoping those lines would show up a little better. So I'm just experimenting. I could use a chunkier thread. Or I've got four strands here of um, stranded cotton and I'm just doing a little chain stitch can you see there now I wouldn't have to do chain stitch all the way I could do chain stitch and then I could do a few running stitches and just see what works for me but it's just showing you that I never know what I'm doing if I don't you know it's a it's a work in progress and you do some and then you think oh it needs a little bit of that you know and you and then you do it so I'm going to try that as well I'm just going to do chain stitch either a full length of chain stitch or sometimes intersperse with this little running stitch and just see see if I can see it a little better now let's just see where we're up to I have finished I've done enough on the flowers. I didn't do a great deal. Um, I think what really made them work was I loved using that frayed fabric in the centers and then doing those stamens out and just using those those lovely, that silk that I had. Um, but you could use chiffon, you could use lace, you could use ordinary fabric. Um, there's so many things you could do. But, you know, I liked that it just added that delicate touch of that pink that was already in those centers, and we were happy with that. So let's just have a look. I finished up here, that one there. I just did some, some more stitches on. And here I have added in a chain stitch, and I have twirled it around there. And off to the side, the vastly different pieces we have from that one piece of fabric. But I'm not completely finished on this one. I'm not completely happy with this. And I think I think I do want to put in another color. So let me just have a look and see what I have. So if I wanted to add a pop of color to this, um, look at that pink. We could pop a little tiny bit of pink in there and that would really make it zoom and let that go, flow into the background as as we had intended and it still is going to be the background but um i could either use this which is what i suggested in the first place it's very still very delicate but i do like the that little touch of aqua i don't know aqua yeah and i don't know i sort of want to do something something but in a color that's going to show up I don't I don't know that you're getting that um, also I could use a, like a, this is a wool I could do something like that and just do some thick lines I could count something on so there's plenty of things that I could do there um, so I don't know that I want to add too many colors in like I could add that green it's not too bad I could add this Hmm. So I'll do something. And then that will be the end. But what I wanted to say, I think, was that this piece of fabric has just been uh, very useful. If you have a piece of fabric you really like, grab it out the cupboard and try a different few techniques on it and see how you can change it. I'm thinking I might even do a third video here and just do something completely different again okay well there's this aqua one that I said there's a plain aqua 
maybe a thread of each maybe i just try it and see what happens um there are, there are other colors i could have put in look at that that's quite nice too we could have gone the the peachy tones lots of things um, i'm just going to try the aqua because that's what i originally thought now i did two strands of the plain cotton and then i added one strand of the shiny to one strand of normal and i'm going back again i don't know whether you're going to pick up that there is any shine on that but you know it's sort of subtle the whole thing is trying to be subtle but that little bit of blue oh aqua you know, it doesn't hurt i think it's it's becoming more uh, fluid now and now i'm finishing off now with two strands of that silky shiny fab, uh, thread but i don't think you can see it so that's it and i hope you like it can you see that very pale aqua running through sometimes we've done these lovely little swirls to finish off rather than to go out the other side so it's very um suggestive of of the breeze perhaps or the wind or or um sorry no that maybe even the scents of the flowers you know being wafted past anyway i like it just because i like the artistic value of it leading you past all of these things and out and out the other side we haven't done a great deal to this fabric but it's completely changed as far as i'm concerned let's have a look if we can find a section of it to show you what it started like okay so we've got like this you see now i put that there yeah we've added quite a lot of um delicacy to it i think we've used the colors in between to just to make it more delicate um so yeah i would get the get this now and I would have a look and I'd say okay you I like you I'm gonna lose that flower if I go down here but that's okay maybe I prefer to have that leaf um, maybe on an angle like that I get them all anyway um, yeah I like it I hope you do too so I hope you've enjoyed this latest exploration that we've done of art through stitch. If you have and you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and to uh, like what you've seen. And uh, if you want to find me anywhere else, all of the links are below. So thank you very much for watching.